All right, so we yesterday we learned about the um, the donations that everyone gave to the Holy Temple and the desert. God wanted everyone to have a portion in the Holy Temple. It could have been that each and every individual had enough to, uh, could have built, built it alone. They were so rich when they came up. But nevertheless, God didn't want that. He wanted everyone to have a, their own part in building the temple. So there were really three <coughs> types donations that everyone gave. Three donations. And the three donations were used for different purposes. There were, two of the donations were identical, <coughs> and one of them was not. Two of the identity were, were everyone had to give a half of a shekel, a becca, the Google it. <clears throat> the amount was called a becca. It was a half of a shekel. Every Jew had to give two half shekels. One of them, which was used for the sockets that held the boards, which made the walls, made up the consisted of, the, it was constituted the walls of the. Uh, holy and the holy holies, because this is a portable temple. It was it was uh, it was disassemble. You could uh, uh, disassemble it, and you could uh, reassemble it. And that's what they did. Every time God gave the order, they would take the thing apart and they would move it. So the there were big heavy boards. They kind of they were the walls of the. It's called the holy and the holy of holies. The holy. <clears throat> is where there was a, a small golden altar for burning incense. There was the famous menorah of seven sticks. And there was what's called the show, the face bread. It was on the right side, they called the show bread. It was face bread. Because it, was, it was shaped like a U, sort of, and it had a square. It had these faces to it. And there was a table that had 12 loaves of these bread. That was in the holy. And then in the holy of holies, there was the ark and inside of the ark was the tablets. <clears throat> and But the walls to this whole structure were from wood. Wood. Eitzi shitim, shitim, which is sometimes translated as a cedar wood, and sometimes as akakia wood, which whatever that is, I don't know. But it was very, very heavy. And they were held together, <clears throat> at least on the bottom, they were held in place by these sockets. There were these, like, bases that they had. And these bases were made <coughs> from silver and they were bought from this half shekels that everybody gave. That's one. That's one of the half shekels. Then there was another half shekel that everybody gave and that was to buy the communal offerings <coughs> to purchase the communal offerings which were offered up on the altar. And then there was a third donation that everyone gave and that was <coughs> for the uh the ingredients the, the 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 material that was used to create to build the altar from 13 or 15 things zav gold silver copper <coughs> different types of cloth different types of precious stones etc <coughs> So the Rebbe asked the question, <clears throat> why is it that there was a difference in these donations? The two of them were equal for everybody, and one of them was different from everybody. So he said, the Rebbe said, well, one of them I can sort of understand why it's equal for everyone, because that is the <clears throat> half a shekel that everybody gave, which was used for the communal offerings, because the communal offerings were in some way to fix up the rebellious spirit and the rebellious actions that the Jews did when they worshipped the golden calf. <clears throat> so now by bringing these offerings and doing exactly what God wants, is that fixes up this general sin of the golden calf. And because this, the worship of the golden calf was a general sin, it <clears throat> gave God the impression that the Jews, all the Jews, just are not reliable. You can't do anything. You take them out of Egypt and give them miracles and do anything you want to. <clears throat> Split the sea and tell them. God told them directly, don't worship idols, and they'll still do worship idols. So God was sort of thinking, you know, maybe I should uh, go back to the drawing board. But then they made the 
<coughs> the uh, I, God said, I got a better idea. I'm going to make this holy temple, and people will sacrifice sacrifices, and then by doing exactly what I want, it will show me that the Jews are reliable. So that we can understand, because we're equal by everybody. right? These offerings were equal for all the Jews, showing the Jews were willing to do unconditionally what God said. So this sort of fix, makes up for the golden calf. But on the other hand, what about the other two donations? First of all, both of those other two donations were for the Holy Temple. One was for the sockets, and the other one was for the other materials. So basically they were the same. Why does it have to be two? And why are the sockets different from all the other materials? The sockets, everyone gave the same amount, the half a shekel. And all the other materials, everybody gave whatever they wanted to. So it sort of doesn't make any sense. So let's go. Vav. <clears throat> Hi Yerushalmi, the, the Talmud Yerushalmi, Mefaret, Kol Achad, Mishlosh Pamim Behem Mofia Hamusag Truma. Each time it appears the word Truma, donation, in this pasuk. Le'ezu Truma Yeromezet. Which Truma is it talking about? We already talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, one one is talking about the general offerings. And the other one is talking about the <clears throat> the uh, the adanim, and the other one is talking about the all the other materials three times in, that made up the temple. But the, the Yerushalmi goes a little bit further. It says like this: <clears throat> Yichuli truma is says about the trumas adanim, like we said, the sockets. Tichu etrumati, that is for the altar. <clears throat> That's to, 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 on, the, to on, on the altar. The zota truma shetikumitam, and what it says zota truma, this is talking about the building the mishkan, just like pretty much like we just said, right? Says no kach no medima devarim. So this we can learn zota truma. That what it says. This is the donation that you should take from them. It says gold, silver. And copper. Three, thirteen or fifteen things which are <coughs> signified, which are singled out for building the Mishkan. The Gabia Pasuk on the Pasuk Tikhuli Tru Tikhu there it says Asher Yid Leno Venu Libo. It says that <clears throat> everyone should give according to their generosity of their heart. Therefore, this is talking about the sacrifices. Why? Because the sacrifices, they are chashuva machshava shabalev. Because they are <clears throat> really dependent a lot on the thoughts of your heart. When people would bring sacrifices to the temple, it's not that they would just do this mechanical thing and bring sacrifices so that they could give more um, <clears throat> they didn't bring sacrifices mechanically, right, it wasn't mechanically it wasn't just a mechanical they had to do it with their heart, therefore we say nowadays, prayer nowadays is in the place of the sacrifices, prayers are the service of the heart <clears throat> that's the main thing of the prayer is what you think about. In other words, the thoughts that you have when you pray. That's why it's so important to translate the words in prayer, but not only to translate the words, but also to put meaning into the words. So if so, we have the prayer. Zota Truma is talking about <clears throat> the, the individual sacrifice that everybody gave whatever they wanted to to the Holy Temple. That one, it says... <clears throat> about Asher Yidvenu Libo, the Yerushalmi says that it says that they're that give whatever your heart wants. That one is talking about the equal offering, the half shekel that everyone gave for the offerings, because the offerings are the place of prayer. Prayer now is in the place of offerings, but also when a person brought offerings, his heart had to be in it. He had to be really contrite and his heart. Therefore, there leaves all the, only the pasuk, Vayikhuli Truma, 
This is talking about the sockets. According to this, the word where it says, Vayikhu li truma, the li khu li truma, the first sentence, yikhu li truma, is talking about the sockets. <clears throat> so if so, we get the, the, this idea of bringing, having a special donation for the sockets that held the the boards, it's a bit problematic. First of all, why did they have to have a special donation just for the sockets? I mean, they held the board. That was just one, another one of the items in the building of the ta- of the tabernacle. And another thing is, is why was it equal by everybody? Why were the sockets equal by everybody? <clears throat> the sockets were all the same. The sockets were all the same. But it's like everything else. Let's say, for instance, the, war, the wood. All the boards, on the, they were all the same. But nevertheless, everybody gave according to what they wanted to. The boards were grouped with other things. So it's all the no, no, no. Twelve or thirteen different materials were used, right? One of them was silver, and that should have been for the the sockets. In other words, the sockets. Why do the sockets deserve the special attention? According to what it says, that everybody was rich, but even nevertheless. <coughs> True, could be, but they, they, it doesn't mean that the others were poor. Everyone it says that they, they, they gathered tremendous amounts of money coming out of Egypt, and they go. <clears throat> they, like in the census, every, every name of the Jews. Right. It's we'll see how it's connected. I mean, l- listen. I mean, the fact is. I'm curious about the third portion. What? It says the giving to the heart that's talking about the offerings because the offerings, when you brought an offering to the temple, it had to be with your heart. But the, uh, the, the contribution to the offerings was also a half a shekel. No. Wait one second. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. Yes, that's right. It was also a half a shekel. Yes. The heart is for where everybody got to, to, to bring whatever they wanted. Okay. And okay, good. If so, we have a lot of questions over here. What's going on? Or we can say, listen, a very simple way to say it is that, listen, let God do what he wants. He does whatever he wants to. What's the problem? You know, God wants to do, wants to have 17 offerings. Uh, what do we care? He says, no, the point of Hasidut is to teach us that everything in the world, and infinitely more so everything in the Torah, <clears throat> is coming to teach us some sort of a lesson. So if from the world we can't learn from every bug or from every blade of grass, but from the words of the Torah we should be able to learn because that's the whole purpose of the Torah. If so, we have a question. Why is it that there were three types of donations? And why is it that two of the donations were identical? And one was whatever he wanted. And one of those identical ones was basically for the same thing as the one for whatever he wanted. It was for one of the ingredients of the tabernacle. Right, that everybody brought gold, they brought silver, and the silver was used for the the basis. Right? No, no, that was not what used. The silver that they brought was used for something else. The the, the base, the adanim, that was built by the half shekel offerings, different from everybody else. Why? Why is it different? Okay. Now we're learning even more. According to the Yerushalmi, the first time that it's mentioned in this sentence in the Torah about giving. Uh, donation that is referring to this half shekel that went to the sockets so it comes out that some way this is more important the sockets were more important than anything else why were they so more important what, what, what's going on shall davar. the fact is yikhuli <clears throat> this what it says yikhuli it really is referring to all three donations the Omic is even more. Yikhuli, that you have to take to me, to God's essence. This refers not only to those donations, it refers to the Klal, the Torah, the Mitzvot, all the Torah and the commandments. I mean, really, whatever a person does is supposed to be totally 
for the Creator. That's why He's creating us. Kafisha Neymar, like it says in the Tanya, in the name of the Zohar. Al Yedei Torah by Mitzvot, by means of Torah and Mitzvot in the 47th chapter. Bo Vayichuli, that you take the shortest chapter in the Tanya. That the whole idea of the Torah is Yichuli Truma. The whole Torah is Oti Atem Lokim. God gave Himself to us. He gave Himself to us, and we have to give ourselves to Hashem. Imzo Mofiel Mili. If so, we have to understand why is this word Li to me? God is saying to me, take to me your donation. That's referring on all of Judaism. Everything has to be taken to God. Li. The whole Torah. Why does it appear here, according to the Yerushalmi, only in relation to the offerings, the half shekel that was given for the Adanim, the, the basis, these, these uh, how do you say, foundations? Is it that important? <laughs> Near Eifo, but it seems, Mikan, Hevdel, Nosav, between the Adanim and all the other parts of the Mishkan and all the other sacrifices. Shedavka Ba'adonim, especially, especially in these foundation sockets that the boards were in, this is where it is really expressed the Li Begilui. In these sockets that the boards were placed in, this you can really see that everything was given to God. How? How? What does this mean? But call Makom Shaomar Li because every time it says Li to me, Eno Zaz Lolam, it's eternal. Anything that's done purely for God, that thing is eternal. Maybe we don't see it in the world because the world is so, so temporal. So false. So when you do something real, the world, it's eternal. It has no place in this world. But the fact is, it's really eternal. And where does it say, Li, take for me by these sockets? What is so important about them? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Good answer. We'll see. Niramikan Evdel Nosab bin Adanim. Yes, okay, we did that. Zion. Hashoni. Now the answer. Okay, you with us, Herschel? We're on page in my book 146. Paragraph Zion. Has shown me the difference between the Adanim and between all the other aspects of the tabernacle. The Shnei Avdalim Amanuyim. And the two differences that we said, namely the all the, everything else, all the other uh, materials used for the Mishkan came from everybody's free will, whatever they wanted to, give whatever they wanted. And the Adanim came from these half shekels. Half shekels. And number two, the Adanim are the only one that it says Li, according to the Yerushalmi. Yichuli Truma, you even will understand Achrei Hezbera Tochan Adanim Yibechinet Nefesh Adam. We can understand from the soul of man. The pasuk Asali Mikdash Veshachanti Betochem in the sentence where it says, "Make me a holy temple, and I will dwell within them." Medayikim the Rizal the Rabbis they imply from this. That it seems that at first glance there's a little bit of sort of a grammatical error over here. It should say, make me a temple. God said to the Jews, this week's Torah reading, make me a temple and I will dwell in it. That's what it should say. Make me a temple and I'll dwell in it. Because that was the truth. They dwell, when, when, when they made this tabernacle, is that was the place where God's presence was revealed. Right? <clears throat> like I gave the example a lot of times in this room we're sitting here there's television waves and there's radio waves right, can you see it? can't see it, bring a television into the room, turn it on and it just picks up what's here you just see what's here same thing, 
God is everywhere. God's presence is everywhere. <clears throat> God's blessing, His meaning is infinite, is everywhere. <clears throat> but the world is not a vessel for it. You bring a holy temple, it's the proper tool, the proper instrument to feel the oneness of God. As that's what the, so God is revealed in the holy temple. But that's not what it says. In the Torah it says, Make me a temple, a temple, and I will dwell within them. Okay, you could say a simple meaning is that, okay, now, without the temple, God was not dwelling with um, in the midst of the Jews. Now he is dwelling in their midst. But the rabbis don't learn it that way. The rabbis learn. It says inside of them, inside of each and every one of them. Move on Shagam Bamishkan Migdash, if so, in the tabernacle and in the <coughs> holy temple, a Ruchani, the spiritual one inside of every Jew, <coughs> because that's what it said the holy temple, God will dwell inside of us, and God only dwells inside of a holy temple. So it must be, if He's dwelling inside of us, that each one of us is a holy temple. So it must be that there must be a correspondence to all these details that it says in the Torah about the holy temple. To the holy temple, which is in each and every one of us. There must be also this portion, which is called the Adanim, inside of every one of us. All right, Herschel. Ches, what are these Adanim that are so important? These sockets that the boards were put in to keep them standing. Why are they different from everything else in the holy temple? They were the lowest in the Mishkan. Humility. But nevertheless, they are the thing that holds the whole thing up. Even these high, beautiful boards, thick, heavy, and the beautiful tapestries. Even though that they were much higher quality and much more, uh, how do you say, exquisite than these sockets were. The sockets were just something on the ground. No big, no. What does this mean in our personal holy temple of each and every one of us? By the way, what was the holy temple? The holy temple was <coughs> a place where they served God. Right? They served God. It wasn't some sort of a, of a, uh, you know, pristine, quiet, silent sanctuary that you went in order to come back to yourself and, you know, realize the, the holiness and the, the exquisiteness of God. No. You went into the Holy Temple and what was going on there? First of all, there was music. And there was all animals. And there was blood all over the place. And they were bur- and there was fire. And they were burning up these animals on the, tem- on the temple. They were slaughtering them, taking their parts and their pieces and spilling the blood. The place was wild by the Holy Temple. It was a really wild place. True, no one was doing what they wanted to. They were all doing exactly what God wants. So it wasn't some sort of a, uh, like a madhouse, right? People were, and the, the quality of the people that were serving were very high quality people. These were people who really lived according to their principles and really were interested only in doing what, God wants for the benefit of the world. They didn't think of themselves at all. So the people were unique and everything was unique, but it was still pretty wild over there. Uh, right. No confusion whatsoever. Everybody did exactly what they wanted to, what, exactly what God wanted. And if a person made the slightest mistake, as everyone would point it out to him, <clears throat> everyone would point it out. And there were, there, were, there were repercussions. Okay. But what was the foundation of this whole business in the tabernacle? What was it? The sockets, everything relied on the sockets. That's what kept everything up. Lefichach, therefore, I'm sorry, means, <clears throat> did we do with this out of time? Yes, yes. Okay, hakrashim, the boards, benefesh adam, what are the boards in our personal holy temple regarding serving God? Hakokotapanimim. <clears throat> These are inner 
qualities, inner abilities, inner senses that we have. Seichel, intelligence, midos, emotions. Therefore, each one of these boards was ten amos high, corresponding to the ten powers of the soul, the ten spheres of the soul. The yiriot, the curtains that surrounded the on the outside, that, were, that made constituted the courtyard, they were kochot makifim. These are what's called external powers of a person, will and pleasure. Adanim, but these sockets, only the darga nechuta, they are the lowest from all of these services of God. And what is it? Shiflu. Humility. Hitbatlut shall kabalat all. Total surrender to God in a way of accepting the yoke. Whatever you want to tell me to do, I'll do, God. Right? You want me to be the prince, the king, I'll be the king. You want me to be the janitor, I'll be the janitor. Whatever you say, I'll be equally happy. And I'll do the job as well as I can. It's not to say that the, if I'm going to be a janitor, so, you know, I'll do it. But, you know, like you say, bite the bullet, you know, I'll do it. No. You, God, want me to be a janitor, and I have the qualities that I could be the chief brain surgeon of this. But for some reason, God, you know I could be a brain surgeon. And you want me to be a janitor, I'm going to be the best janitor. I'll be the nicest janitor. I'll be friends with all the other janitors. Anytime I see someone in the, in the, in the, in the janitor in the hospital, I'll say hello to them. I'll say, how are you feeling? I'll do the best I can to make every, the, oh my, the whole <clears throat> atmosphere around me the best atmosphere possible. Because right? that's what God wants. I'm doing what God wants, not what I want. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. We're good. You're doing very good. Imzo, nevertheless, Davka Haim Yesodo shall call a Mishkan, even though this is humility, and humility has no special shining quality of its own. It stays in the background. That's the foundation of the holy temple. Ka'amor, Navshi Kafar Lachaltiyeh. Like it says, like King David said, my soul will be like dirt to everyone. That's not nice, my soul will be like dirt, but everything grows from dirt. In other words, everyone will grow from me. I'll encourage others. And by means of this, if a person is truly humble, then God opens up his heart to the Torah. And your commandments my soul pursues. When? If a person is humble. Okay, Herschel. You can put the book on the table if you want. There we go. Tet. Zegamatam. This is the reason why the Trumata Danim, why the donation for these sockets was only on the first year. Only the first year when they were building. The Ilua Trumos Acheros, so Yugam Bishanim Habod. And the rest of these donations, the donations for the items that were in the temple, the tabernacle, for the upkeep. And also the, the sacrifices, the communal sacrifices. This was done every year. Every year they had maxes shekel. It means like this. <coughs> she flew. Why was so? Why if it's so important? Why was it only the first year? It should be every year. She flew. Be but lut. This idea of humility and total negation. They are the foundation for service of God. Jerusalem barosheri They have to be in the beginning. But afterwards, Kishi Yasod Kayam, when a person already has this foundation and he feels that me and everything I have and all there is and the Torah and the is the and the, and the mitzvahs, the commandments that I'm doing, is tremendously <clears throat> it's a tremendous miracle <clears throat> that God gave me these things. Tremendous miracle. Humility. Once a person has this and he has this attitude. Afterwards, then you have to do the individual service. Of, that's what I said before. You could be the head brain surgeon of the hospital and the king 
comes and says, I recognize your work, you're doing great work as a brain surgeon, but we need a janitor, I want you to be a janitor. So what's the first thing he does? Okay, he has total surrender, and he does, that's it. I'm totally surrendered, I'm going to do this job, I'm a nothing, I'm a nobody, and I will, you know, I'm just, God is just creating me every minute, I'm just so lucky to be alive, I'll do whatever you want. That's good in the beginning. But afterwards, you can't keep saying the same thing every day. A person has to say, one second, I want to be the best janitor possible. I'm going to learn how to be a janitor. I'm going to keep my eyes open. Maybe I can buy a better brush. Maybe I can get a better uh, a better uh, mop. Maybe there's a way to clean things. I'll, we'll figure out a way to clean the walls, clean the house. I can clean. I'll be the best janitor possible. Right? I'll, be, I'll, I'll be a positive janitor. I'll say positive things to everybody. I'm not going to get anybody. He puts all of his being into being as good as he can to be a janitor. In other words, first of all, you have to have humility. But after you have humility and you accept wherever you are and you accept it's okay if people are better than me and higher positions than me, but then, because okay, but I want to do my job the best I can. <clears throat> Therefore, it requires afterwards a certain amount of, if you want to call it, egotism. Therefore, Reshita Boda Yom, the first service that we do to God is when we wake up in the morning, Moda'ani, and Hodu Lashem. What does it mean? Hodu, Moda, means he batlut. God, I'm lucky even to be here. Thank you for creating me. Thank you for that I'm, that I'm a Jew. I'm so thankful to you. Right? Okay, that's good in the beginning. He had chalav yisorabur. This is the beginning. But you can't keep saying thank you, thank you, thank you all day. You have to do your work. Right? <clears throat> You're a brain surgeon. You can't say thank you, God, for creating me. Thank you. Do the work. Do the job. Save people. Ba'acharev, afterwards. Bota dargo to pratyot. Then, in, same thing in prayer. First of all, you have Psuki de Zimra. Yeah, then you have the law, the places of Kriyashma. You have Kriyashma, which you have to get into them and you have to understand them and wake up your heart. Okay, Herschel. Ata now. The Ora Amor. We're on Yud. According to what we said, Yivnu Shnei Havdalim. We can understand the two differences between the Adanim and everything else. In regarding to the Avodah Panimis, regarding all the other aspects of the tabernacle, the crushing, the boards, the rios, and the curtains, etc., there are differences between each person. Each person must serve God. Everybody is different. Everyone has to serve God in a different way. It's just like every human being. Every human being has the same number of bones and the same number of organs. Same thing the Torah. Every Torah, <clears throat> the Torah has the same number of commandments and the same number of laws. But, just like people are different, how you do these laws and how you express yourself in them, which ones you stress more than the others, right? that <clears throat> is up to you. That that every Jew has to have self-sacrifice and every Jew has to be a servant of God and not ask any questions, that's equal to everybody. But after you start that, then you have to do your job as well as you can, whatever your job is. However, Torah, there's some people that are good at learning, there's some people that are good at praying, there's some people that are good at managing, some people, each person has his own thing. Some people are good at all. Some people, some people are not good at anything. Some people, they just can be nice people. Some people, just the whole thing doesn't talk to them. They do Torah. They put on tefillin. They, they this. But they're nice. Some people are honest. They're not even nice, but they're honest. Super honest. Right? Some people are kind. They're not even nice. Right? Some of them are not even honest, but they're tremendously kind. They give to people and they help people. And right? No, they'll do anything. In the middle of the night, they'll go. And... Everybody has their own thing. I'm not being honest. You have to work on it. You're not being nice, you have to work on it. But it's not their thing. Right? It's not their thing. It's very difficult for them to be honest. So they have to, you have, there's some people, I know people, you just have to keep them away from money. You have to keep them away. They just can't they see money, they just go crazy. Right? So that's their vote. That, that's what they have to work on. But as far as serving God, knowing that you do have to work on this, some power you have to work for, that's the basis of Judaism. That's the sockets. But after that, all the individual aspects of the 
holy temple, which is in each side of each and every one of us, that differs each and every person how they express it. How can you get this level of God's essence? Li yikhu li truma. Take to me only not by means of your great genius and not by means of your tremendous talents or your emotions or your wondrous uh, speaking abilities and things. These are very wonderful things. But the way that you take the essence of God is by only by the adanim, this foundational feeling of hitbatlus. The King David said. My soul should be like dirt to everybody. God was not in the fire, which God said to Elijah the prophet. <clears throat> God was not in the fire. He was not in the noise. He wasn't in the big wind. He called the but in a small, silent voice. That's where the king is. It's a story in the Gomorrah that there was a blind person. Who was it? I don't remember, Rav Yosef, or Shmuel, I don't remember. I have to look at the one. And he went with the crowd, says, the king is coming. So he went with the crowd and everybody was coming. And the people around him thought they would sort of play, you know, a joke on him because he was blind. So all of a sudden, hey, uh, there's the, so all of a sudden there was a big fanfare, da -da 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 -da, with trumpets and horses, and they said, oh, that's the king, and so that's not the king. It was right. There was the general. Then after that, there was another big fan. Da, 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 and then they heard all sorts of you know sabers rattling or whatever. The king is here. Says, no, that's not the king. And then afterwards, they heard flutes and things blowing and this, and people singing and dancing. They said, that's the king. Uh, he said, no, that's not the king. It wasn't. It was the prince. Then suddenly, all of a sudden, everything got quiet. And this blind person, this boy, says, that's the king. The king comes when everybody, everyone is hushed. They're all in awe of the king. Taman Gassim Alka, the shame there when it's quiet, that's where the king is. The same thing with us. In if a person has humility, <clears throat> according to how it's explained, these different details in one of the big long discourses, Hasidic discourses in Chabad called Tafresh Ayin Beit, it's explained over there in great detail what it means that God is not in the storm and he's not in the thunders and he's not in the wind, etc. explains. But in a small voice, what is a small voice? So humility is a basic thing. What does is, what is basically humility mean? That everybody in some way has something that I don't have. <clears throat> I have to be perceptive to the good that is in the uniqueness in every person that they have and that I don't have. I have to be perceptive. That's called humility. Humility. Everyone has something good, that I'm, which is the truth. I. What about me? I have something good that they don't have. Right? That's up to them. If they want to perceive it, they can. That's not my business. That's their business. Right? But in that way, everyone has something that's better than me. That's what I have to be perceptive to. Not how I have something that's better than everybody else. That's called humility. <clears throat> even though the fact is I do have something that's better than everybody else so then I have to try to do my best to do that's it you know ah but I'm not you sort of order even though that is true that the foundation of service of God is Kabbalah all and surrender but like we said before in Hamel this is only the foundation the completion of serving God is not humility Completion of serving God is to give to God all of the inner powers, everything that you have. Haseichel, your intelligence. Hamidos, your emotions. Ubehem iev shalatzeit yedechova b'mechziz a shekel. This you cannot suffice with just half of a shekel. Ki im kafi alacha, like it says, asher shemevi minchas ani lo yotze. If a rich person brings a poor person's offering, then he has not fulfilled his obligation. Everyone has to give everything, all that you have, all of your best abilities, all of your best talents, you have to give them to the <clears throat> creator of the universe to make the world a better place. To make the, we're not talking about jumping off a bridge, exactly the opposite. You have to activate all of your abilities to make the world a better place according to the way God wants, because that's what God wants. 
On the other hand, it says, Ani shehevi minchas asher, yotze, a rich person, if he brings to the temple a poor person's offering, he hasn't fulfilled his obligation. But a poor person that brings a rich person, he did fill his obligation. From a fortune, and the explainers may say, commentaries, not only is a poor person, if he brings a rich person's offering, did he do his obligation, right? <clears throat> but even the Kharkhil, this is the best way to do it. This is the best way to do it. He gets a blessing. A poor person that saves all of his money together and he brings a nice, beautiful offering for the holy temple as this is the best way to do it. Right? Even though it's outside of his will. Tohana Damar. Spiritually, what does it mean? <clears throat> also a person who is poor. What does it mean? Poor in mind. Poor in connection to God. A person that is <clears throat> is lacking in his learning of revealed Torah. A person who's lacking even in doing the commandments. Also, this person should bring <clears throat> the gift of a rich man. What's the gift of a rich man? Chasidut. To learn the ideas of the secrets of the Torah. How they are practically explained in Chasidut. From this itself will come a tremendous blessing. Not only to him, but also to the whole world. That's what it's called. He makes himself, like it says, aser ta aser. It says, make yourself, make yourself, pretend that you are rich in order that you will be rich. Bring a rich person's offering and you will be rich. Ein asher el A person, what this means, what does it mean? Rich, rich means you are rich in your soul. If you pretend that you are rich in your soul and give everything you can to the Creator, your Creator, then you will be so. It'll come out that way. You actually will become rich in your abilities, in your intellect, in your emotion. <clears throat> this will be simple richness, not only spiritual, but also physical. Every Jew is supposed to be rich. And the reason you're supposed to be rich is in order to give charity, in order that you can serve God the best way, in children, in health, and in livelihood. So what do we learn? This, the foundation, the adanim, are tremendously important. They are the basis. That's humility. But you have to remember the adanim were there in order to hold up all the other parts of the, uh, the, of the temple. Namely, the other services of God, which are no less important, but first there has to be humility.